You may be seated now. God is so powerful. God has been so real. He's been so good. He's been so real to me. I don't know about you. I can feel somebody say his power. God is awesome, God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for his finished work of grace. I don't know where we would have been today if not because of the power of Jesus. So once again, I welcome you to church. Welcome to Grace World Christian Fellowship where Jesus, the King of Kings, reigns and the grace of our God rules supreme. By the special grace of God, throughout the month of February, we've been looking at spiritual renewal. We've been looking at how we can better ourselves. We've been looking at exploring how we can reach our kingdom capital. We've been examining how can we serve God better, serve the world, and wait for Jesus' return. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The best way for us to do that, one of the best ways for us to do that, is to be spiritually renewed. If you, as a child of God, if you are not spiritually renewed, that means you're not going to have much to do in the presence of God. Because in the presence of God is holiness, the presence of God is spirit, the presence of God is praise and blessings, in the presence of God is power. And the power I'm talking to you about is not political power. It is a power that changes people on the inside. That is what we call transformation. By the special grace of God, he has given us the grace, the privilege, to share through this series on spiritual renewal. See, I tell you, church, there's always going to be a fight going on in your soul. There's going to be a fight raging on in the spiritual war. You cannot fight this battle and win by yourself. You need to depend on something that is bigger than you. And that is the power of the Spirit of God. So by the special grace of God, we have explored spiritual renewal from the perspective of the natural man. The natural man in us that longs to control us. The natural man in us that always loves to dominate. And the natural man in us that his ultimate goal is to rebel against God. We've explored how can we contain the natural man. And by the special grace of God and through his mercy, God has given us the power of his promised word in the Holy Scriptures. We explored Romans chapter 8. And we saw all the fight that's going on in the spiritual. So, by the special grace of God, God gave me that word. And for you to live at your potential as a child of God, You've got to stop the natural man. Must stop the natural man. Because the natural man lies for us to feed it. When you feed the natural man, in fact, you don't need to give much food to the natural man for the natural man to take over your life. The natural man lies to go across and beyond his boundaries. That's why this natural man in us subject us to errands of mediocrity. So by the special grace of God, we have explored all of this. How can we win this fight? The word of one of our church officers here, Brother Yemi, he said, you got to be violent in the spirit. You got to be violent to slay. Oh, church, it's not a casual fight that you just say to the natural man, hey, what's up? And you begin to die with the natural man because the natural man has the capacity and the tenacity to outlast your power. That's why we need to depend on the power of the Spirit of the living God. And now through this series we have explored, how can you as a child of God have this power? How can you acquire this power? 
And we explore that first you have to have less need of the natural man. Have to have less need of the things the natural man throws to us. So by the special grace of God, we explored last week about being a disciplined child of God. Because you cannot overcome the natural man if you're not a disciplined uh, spiritual person. There has to be a level of personal responsibility. And by the special grace of God, I'm going to continue from that today to end this series. See, I tell you, there's always a battle. A battle that is raging on in your life, even this minute as I speak. It's a battle of your soul. It's a battle of the mind. It's a battlefield that the enemy is working on. And it is to capture your mind. But the good news is that you can overcome. Hallelujah. Amen. And live a life of victory. And be that person that God wants you to live. So our best weapon of offense is for us to be continuously renewed in the things of the Spirit. Some of us that are professionals, and some of you that are professionals will understand, you cannot continue to practice nursing or public health or engineering if you don't have continuous education. As a continuous educational unit that you need when you want to renew that license as something that you always have to know. Even though you may have known it in the past, it is required of you that you know it over and over and understand it over and over again. So the spiritual child of God, a spiritually disciplined person, is that person that wants to grow in the knowledge of the grace of God. You can grow in grace, I tell you the truth. The level of grace by which I operated 10 years ago is no longer the level of grace that I'm operating today because I'm growing, praise the Lord. I'm growing in the knowledge of grace. I'm growing in the knowledge of Jesus. That means I am becoming more like Jesus Christ. So, when we took our scripture reading for today, I just want us to first begin from the first verse of the third chapter of Colossians, chapter 3. And the Bible says, Now that you have been raised to a new life with Christ. Amen. It says, Set your sights. Facilitate your attention on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Now look at verse 2. It said, think about things of what? Heaven. Praise the Lord. It said, not things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. Remember the story I began this series about the young boy in the Sunday school. That the Sunday school teacher was asking all the questions. What do you have to do to experience and inherit the kingdom of God? This was not the situation with Nicodemus. This was another story, a real life story. And all the kids were saying all the nice things. I've said that story over and over. You gotta feed the dog. You gotta water the plant. You gotta do all the nice things that we are told. And this young boy said, You've got to be there. See, there is something that happens to the child of God when you surrender to the spirit and leadership of the spirit of the living God. Now, what I'm relating to that is that he said that you. For you died in what? Somebody say in this life. He said, for you died in what? In this life. So you've got to be dead to this life. You've got to be dead uh, to those things we explored in the past on, on Romans chapter 8. You've got to be dead. You've got to be a dead person in this life, church. Hmm. You've got to be a dead person in this life for you to see a man that you like a man that looks all that nice and you chose to ignore him ladies yes see sometimes we over spiritualize things let's make things real as they are you've got to be there brother Yemi, for you to have that encounter that you chose to share with the church of God a few weeks ago you've got to be there 
to be invited by a nice looking lady, mm, church, to come and do pre Valentine. <laughs> All right? And then your wife is not there. Uh, the church leaders are not around. And apparently there was no praising member or praise and worship happening in that environment. And you are lonely. I mean, nobody can catch you and report you to Pastor John. You've got to be there to ignore that nice looking sister. So there's a level of uh, a natural death. This is not the death that we bury somebody, we put them in the coffin, and we send our goodbye and we'll cry and we walk away from the cemetery. This is a different shade of death that I'm talking to you about. How does it happen to the child of God? Because you are now a disciplined spiritual person. Because there's something that happens to you when you become a spiritually disciplined person. I tell you the truth, God will give you the abilities to detect temptation when they are coming. God will equip you with the power to discern. Praise the Lord. Amen. And when you discern what is and what shouldn't be, you are in the best shape, mental shape, to make the best decision for yourself and for God, for his name's sake. Praise the Lord. Amen. So how can you do this if you're still in the corner? If you're still operating from the corner point of view, if you're still in the environment of carnality, how can you win life battles? How can you become the person that God has created you to be? So, in other words, for us to live and be spiritually renewed, on a daily continuum, like I have said, you've got to be there, you've got to be there, and you've got to be there. Now, the example of what we saw in Jesus, in as in, in Mark chapter, in Matthew chapter, uh, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 11, uh, this, the, the example of Jesus here it is something that I want you to begin to understand from a different level today. Because Jesus' example shows us that the orientation of spirituality is something that is in world. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 15 verse 11 that it is not what you eat, so to speak, that does what? Defile the child of God. It is not the outward. It is what? What comes, somebody say, out of you. He said that what is what dwells inside of you. He said that it is the product that comes from within that destroys the child of God. So Jesus was beginning to tell us that as our spirituality, that this, the orientation of our spirituality is something that is in world. It's not what goes into you that defies you, but what does what comes out of you. So that is why the child of God needs to watch it Watch what goes inside you, watch what you want, watch what you cherish, watch what you pride in, watch what your value systems are. You know, you, you know the areas of your life that you're weak. You know the areas of your life that you need to be very careful because the enemy knows those areas. And one thing I've discovered because he has dealt with me in the past, is that when the enemy knows your weaknesses or your areas of weaknesses, he capitalizes on them. That's what we do for some of us that love wrestling, for some of us that love boxing. If you see that your enemy or your opponent have in the past gone through a surgery, like Shemus, <laughs> my friend did, that ran the altar and put him in July, that cost him almost six months to come back to the ring. What the enemy does, or the opponent does, is that he capitalized in that repaired hand. Praise the Lord. So that he will finish you up. So that's what the enemy does to us. He capitalizes on those areas of weaknesses. Maybe you are somebody that lost me. And it's not that you just like anybody, but you know, you just have a propensity. You, you have that tendency, that likelihood. Uh, to be easily swayed by what you see. What the enemy does is that he tries to capitalize on that. 
He tries to capitalize on your mind. In fact, some of those days when somebody is talking reason to you, you don't listen. Because what the enemy does is that he tries to build on the power of the natural man that is inside of us. So that we will defy that person that we are. But that's not going to be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So for us as children of God, uh, to be spiritually disciplined will require us to focus and that's why I took our scripture reading today on the things that are worth some days are above. It will require us because it is when we are dead to this life. It's only when we are dead that we can, we can be motivated to face and focus on the things that are above. Now verse 4 says, And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, he said you will also share in that glory. Isn't that something comforting? That we will share in the glory of Jesus. He said, you will share in all, somebody say all, all, all his glory. Woo! What a wonderful news. You will share in all of the glory of God. I believe the word of God. He said, you will reign with Christ. In other words, you know what it means to be shared into the glory of all of the glory of God. It's something powerful that people need to begin to imagine that you will be able to be welcomed to share in all of the glory. So he says, so, put to death. You see, you got to be dead. Verse 5. He said, what? Somebody said, put to death. He said, put to death the sinful things. He said, so, put to death the sinful earthly things working within you. He said, have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. I've chose to go this part today to end this series because we cannot just over spiritualize stuff. There are things that makes the natural man in us to, to be at war with us. And there are things that makes the natural man in us to subject us to mediocrity. And there are things that binds us in captivity and subject us to mediocrity and subject us to the, you know, be disingenuous to who God is to us. And these are the practical day by day things that defeat us from where we are going. So he said, put to death. Say to your neighbor, put to death. He said, put to death. No, you can do better. He said, put to death. He said, put to death. Everything is working within you. That's the natural man. And what is this natural man or this natural woman that is in you, that's been fighting you, and that's been defeating you, that have been defeating the goal, that have been defeating you from reaching your kingdom potentials? Uh, what is this natural thing in us that we have to put to death? It says sexual immorality, and some say sexual impurity. And what is sexual immorality or sexual impurity? Now, because of our world that has been so advanced, the other week, my wife and I were just staying in the living room. And this documentary just came on board. And we decided that we we're gonna watch it. And it was this phone, telephone, they call her a telephone sex entrepreneur. Oh, church. A telephone sex what? Entrepreneur and my wife and I that one caught our attention. So I said, Honey, look at so I, I allow my wife, we watch, we watch the whole thing. And now, this full sex entrepreneur was someone that was poor, but you know, they say in business, innovate, innovate, innovate. She decided to do something that other people have not been doing in that industry. And she built an empire. If you see the type of house this woman is occupying, she built a brand with telephone sex. I don't know if some of you know what telephone sex is about. I don't mean to interpret that. That people from all walks of life, people are now calling from abroad. People even in Super Bowl, in one of the sessions, a Super Bowl was going on. And somebody called with all the noises going on in that environment to all, you know, to release some things. And now, this woman now recruited so many other people, and I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, if you're not strong in the mind, don't even try to see the documentary. It's, it's very, 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 it's very, very, very fleshy. 
So now, this woman was on the phone, making all the money with all the, and had all kind of phone lines, all kind of people, people were, Oh, Jesus Christ. Shouting, you think people were really having the live sex. And that's how all the customers. And in certain situations, depending on the customers, some can go up to $30. Some can go up to $10 a minute. Some can go up to $3. It depends on the category now. One thing that struck me is that she now has rebate. <laughs> if you call in, Oftentimes, the number of times a week, you get some credit, sir, church. <laughs> now, what am I trying to say? All kind of sexual words of the same purities. <laughs> sexual impurities and lust that the natural man feeds on. And it's so surprising that even people that came on day one, the way, the way some of those people were doing their things on the phone were so powerful. Because this woman has given them orientations and invested so much in them. That's why she's called a telephone sales entrepreneur. So there's all kind of things going on in our world. There's all kind of situations that the man of God, the woman of God, the believer, the child of God, need not be ignorant of the devices or strategies of what? As the devil. Praise them all. So it says, for these reasons, set your affection on what? Things that are what above. They say impurity, lust, and evil desires. Now, there's something that struck me as I was going through this, and the Lord was taking me through this. He says, Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater. Have you have you really considered that in your life? That a greedy person is what? An idolater. You know, many times we read the scriptures. But I invite you to read the scripture proactively. Read the scripture with your ears open to hear God speak to you. He said that an idol and a greedy person is what? It's an idolater. Because it is worshipping what? Things of this world. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4, the word of God said that Satan, the God of what? This world. Has done what? Blinded the mind and the eyes of what? The believers. It's just like what we were studying this morning. Certain affections and the things, the rich and the, you know, all the materialistic things that the enemy. So there are things that cause us on a daily basis not to be the person that God wants us to be. There are things that makes war within us. That the child of God need to be spiritually, somebody say, renewed. Needs to be a spiritual renewal going on in your life every minute, every second, every hour, and every day and week and month of the year. That is why Jesus says in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, that you should carry your cross. He who wishes, he whose intentions are to do what? To come after me, should do what? Deny himself. Carry his cross and do what? Follow me. So following Christ on a daily basis is something that can help us now. How can you follow Christ on a daily basis? You need to find time to spend in the presence of God. It's not a matter of rushing through the prayers. I mean, proactively. You cannot be a spiritually renewed or a spiritually disciplined person and you cannot find time to reverence God, find time out of your inconveniences to speak with God and to allow God to hear you and for you to hear God when God speaks to you. So God, as we are closing this session, I believe he's speaking to some people in this church that these sins, verse 6, will cause the anger of God on his children. He said, you used to do these things. You used to be in this category. But he said, look, you are no longer in this because there's a new life that has now sprung up into your life. He said, you used verse 7 to do these things when your life was still part of this world. In other words, when you have not starved the natural man, when the natural man still dominated your lifestyle, he said, you used to be part of this world. 
But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. See, in our world, in America today, the F word is so good in our mind. In fact, there's another word, the S word. Everybody that says, hey, shit, shit. You know, the way we use languages, I was just making a tone very innocently yesterday, and there was just this guy was coming to this church. The guy just removed his hand from the car. The way he <laughs> did it to me, it was like, <laughs> mercy Lord. I didn't even see him. I just ignored him, yeah. and I drove. So, in our world today, there are so many silly things we do, foreign things we do. We think they no longer will matter. But see, the Bible says you have to get rid of what? All of these things because it's no longer going to be part of the renewed child of God. Because the affection is now set, set facilitate your attention on the world and the things that are higher than you, above. Praise the Lord. Say, so where Christ each sitting on the right hand side of who? Of God. Amen. So all these dirty languages, he said, don't lie to each other. You think that lying will get you to your place of promotion in life? He said, don't lie, don't cheat. He said, don't put all of these things. He said, for you have stripped off the old sinful nature and all its wicked days. Now, verse 10, where we took our scripture test. It says, put on your new nature, praise the Lord, and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. Amen. That's a very powerful appeal. He said that when you are renewed, when the spiritually disciplined child of God is renewed, you grow in grace, and when you are grown in grace, you will appear more and more like who? Like your father who is in heaven. So he said, put on this new life. For in this new life, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew. It doesn't matter your denomination. It doesn't matter your background. He said, it doesn't matter whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, whether you're an apostolic or Adventist, whether you're a, 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 a Presbyterian or Anglican. He said, it doesn't matter whether you belong to this group or that group, it says that because the old sinful nature have been buried, because you are now a renewed person, because the Spirit of God is now operating in your life, he said you are no longer slave, praise the Lord, you're no longer slave to the carnal man and to his deeds, because you are now free, liberation. And because you are now free, he said that Christ is all that matters, isn't that powerful? And he lives in all of us. So through this month, we've been working on this series on spiritual renewal. I tell you the truth, church. I personally have been renewed. God has renewed me even in this series. I don't know about you. Because see, the, the, the reality in our earthly dealings is that there are things that are always there to fight us, to defeat us, to subject us, to, you know, just mask us, to make us things that we are not. How can you have victory? That victory comes when the child of God is renewed and surrendered to the power and authority of Jesus Christ. And today, I don't know most of us who are there who long to be spiritually renewed. You know there's something in your life that needs to be renewed. You know there's something in your life that needs the ministration and the power of liberation from the presence of the Holy Ghost. Maybe there's a lifestyle, an immoral lifestyle, a lifestyle choice, a behavior, something that has defeated your life. And this month, you want to bury that portion of your life and be spiritually awakened, be spiritually renewed, so that you can be that person that God wants you to be. The good news today, as we end this series in fasting and prayer, is that there is hope for you. For the word of God has declared that all who will call upon him shall be saved. He said, all that my father has given to me, I will by no means do what? Cast away. And that day the Jenna came and said, what shall I do? 
And the word of God declares that he was given that opportunity of eternal things. He was given that opportunity of surrender. He was given that opportunity, just like Nicodemus, to surrender his mind to God and to give him the victory of God that he needed to have his best everyday life, to live in victory and be that person that God wants him to be. I don't know any of us here today that wants and long and thirst for righteousness, that long to be renewed spiritually, to be a better child of God as we march into the month of March, the month that God has declared to me to declare that the month is a month that we are marching to our victory, praise the Lord. Amen. So I don't know some of you who wants to march into the month of March and march into your month of victory because you are now a spiritually renewed person. You now have victory over limitations that the natural man has set for you. I don't know if those people are in church today. And my goal in this short discourse is to invite you to stand up as together as a people of God, as we pray, as we give God a chance to operate freely in our lives. I don't know how many of you who are here who believe that something is needed or that something needs to be changed in your life and you believe you cannot do it by yourself. You cannot do without the power of the Spirit. You cannot do without Him. As Brother Yemi comes to lead out this prayer chain to challenge our minds and equip our minds to victory. To grant us the permission that God has been seeking through the power of the Spirit of God. As our brother comes, I want you to be open to the leadership of God. To the leadership of God. I want you to be open to that leadership of His Spirit. I want you to open yourself. You don't need to tell me. You can confess those sins those things that have set limitations for you and say to God, I cannot do without you. Just cry out your soul to God. Cry to him who is able to keep you from falling. Tell him, I cannot do without you. And it is my hope this hour that as you sing this song, that God will use you mightily and powerfully as we go into our seasons of prayer. That I cannot do without you.